How do you turn that bite of food into a chemical that a cell can recognize and use as energy? The first step is altering the food into its component chemical compounds and then getting those molecules into your cells. That process is called digestion. Once inside your cells, the process of turning that bite of food into useful energy by cellular respiration, pyrolysis literally means splitting sugars, and it is the first step of cellular respiration, occurring in the cytoplasm of the cell. Glycolysis consists of two distinct phases, an energy investment phase and an energy harvesting phase. In the energy investment phase, two ATP molecules transfer energy to the glucose molecule, forming a six-carbon sugar diphosphate molecule. This molecule splits, and the energy harvesting phase begins. During this phase, the two three-carbon molecules are converted to pyruvate, and ATP is formed. Glycolysis is a ten-step reaction that involves the activity of multiple enzymes and enzyme assistance. In the process, a net of two molecules of ATP, two molecules of pyruvate, and two high-energy electron-carrying molecules of NADH are produced. When oxygen is present, the pyruvate molecules and NADH enter the mitochondria. And the next stage of cellular respiration begins. The next stage of cellular respiration involves the movement of pyruvate into the mitochondria, where it undergoes oxidation. Each pyruvate molecule is converted into a compound called acetyl-CoA. In the process of pyruvate oxidation, electrons are transferred to NAD, producing NADH, and a carbon is lost, forming carbon dioxide. The next stage is the citric acid cycle, also called the Krebs cycle. Here, acetyl-CoA will bind with a starting compound called oxaloacetate, and through a series of enzymatic redox reactions, all carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in pyruvate ultimately end up as carbon dioxide and water. The pathway is called a cycle because oxaloacetate is the starting and ending compound of the pathway. For every glucose that enters glycolysis, the cycle completes twice, once for each molecule of pyruvate that entered the mitochondria. During pyruvate oxidation and the citric acid cycle, a net of 8 NADH, 2 FADH2, 2 ATP, and 6 CO2 are produced for each glucose molecule. In order to understand how the majority of the energy is produced by aerobic respiration, we need to follow the NADH and FADH2 molecules to the next stage, the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is a series of membrane-bound carriers in the mitochondria that pass electrons from one to another. As the electrons are transferred between the membrane proteins, the cell is able to capture energy and use it to produce ATP molecules. Proteins in the chain pump hydrogen ions across a membrane. When the hydrogen ions flow back across the membrane through an ATP synthase complex, ATP is synthesized by the enzyme ATP synthase. Oxygen acts as the terminal electron acceptor. By accepting electrons, oxygen is reduced to form water, a byproduct of the electron transport chain. All the high-energy electron carriers from the previous stages of cellular respiration bring their electrons into the chain. From this, the bulk of ATP from the entirety of cellular respiration is produced, a net of 32 to 36 ATP. In summary, we have seen how the four stages of cellular respiration are responsible for converting the energy found in the glucose molecule into ATP, the energy battery of the cell. On average, 36 ATP molecules are produced per glucose molecule that entered the cell. In the process of producing ATP, oxygen is brought in from the bloodstream to be the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, and the carbon dioxide that is produced as a byproduct is released. The goal of cellular respiration 
is to transfer the energy from the food that we eat daily into ATP that our bodies can use. This process starts with the eating of a snack or meal and ends with capturing the energy from the complete breakdown of the nutrients into energy and carbon dioxide.